Well, good day, everyone. Elmer Tom here with a rather dry, but hopefully informative uh, presentation. Now, please stick around for the whole video and please take a moment now to like this video by clicking on the thumbs up icon. I certainly would appreciate it. This video will discuss the decibel or dB. I'll give a very brief history of the dB, then define some terms. I'll show you how to do the math and it's actually pretty simple once you know the, know the process. Then we'll take a look at applications in ham radio of the dB. Some of these might help you when you're doing your research in a gear purchase and might even save you some money. Uh, you know, and we're all, all like to save money. Uh, finally, I'll talk about questions on the tech and general tests that concern the dB. Now, for a brief history. The decibel was developed by Bell Labs in 1928. They combined and modified previous measurements that were developed to define power loss over miles of telegraph and telephone cable. Uh, the decibel was named after Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone and also founder of Bell Labs. Since it was named after Bell, the B is capitalized as a proper name, like the uh, capital W for James Watt, the capital A for Amperes or Amps uh, for Andres Maria uh, Ampere, and uh, the capital V named for Alessandro Volta. Now we're gonna go a little deep, uh, but stick with me. It'll all make sense in just a few minutes. A dB is the common lo log representation of the ratio between two powers. The mathematical formula is dB equals 10 times the logarithmic base 10 values of power one divided by power two. The term dB can be modified such as dBm where power one is shown as one milliwatt and power two is a power given in milliwatts. DBW does the same thing, but using watts of power. DBI is the power reference to an isotropic radiator, and DBD is power reference to a dipole antenna. Now, we're gonna talk more about DBI and DBD in a bit. Ratios are simply the comparison between two values. We use ratios almost every day. When driving, we use the ratio between distance and time to give us miles per hour and we use the ratio between distance and liquid measurement at the gas station to give us miles per gallon. At the grocery store, we use the ratio between weight and cost to give us price per pound. So we do, we use them all the time, nothing to be scared of. In the dB formula, the ratios is, is, is expressed as a fraction. In this case, P1 divided by P2, which gives us the answer X. Now we address the logarithm. A logarithm is a quantity representing the power to which a fixed number, the base, must be raised to produce a given number. Since the base of our logarithm is 10, the value we're looking for is what the number 10 must be raised by to equal x, exponential, okay? By the way, logarithms can be exp expressed in different bases. For example, a hexadecimal or octal logarithm would be expressed with a subscript of 16 or 8 respectively. The common log is in base 10. Now it may or may not have a subscript 10. Uh, to get from the logarithmic answer back to a ratio, you just need to raise 10 by the power of the logarithm. For now, let me put my headsets on and go to my computer to demonstrate what I've been talking about. This is the standard calculator that comes in Windows 10. I've got it set on the scientific mode, so that gives me my log function. And this is the common log. It doesn't have the uh, subscript 10 on it, but it is the common log. And we also have exponential of 10. So we can go both ways with our dB process. Let's start with a simple, simple form. First, we want to fill in P1 and P2. P1, we're going to make 
number 2. And we're going to divide P1 by T, P2, which will be uh, 1. This should give us 2. 2 over 1 is 2. Now we're going to look for the log of that. Now you'll see that I'm 0 0.3 and a whole bunch of decimal places. Uh, so we are rounding up to 3 here. The last thing we need to do is multiply that times 10. So we're going to do that. Now, reversing that is very easy. We start by dividing that by 10. Okay. And putting it as the exponential of 10. And by golly, we, we're back to our doubling of 2. Uh, what happens if we go if we flip those two. So what we'll do, we'll put P1 as a 1 and we'll divide that by P2 which is a 2. Now we got 0.5 or 1 half. We'll take the log of that and you'll note that this is now a negative value. So if you are going, if you're looking looking at uh, increase, an increase uh, you will get a positive value. If you're looking at a decrease or an attenuation, you'll get a negative value. Of course, we do need to remember to multiply this by 10. Now, uh, let's look at uh, something a little different. Uh, let's go with a 3 in P1, and we're going to divide that by 12. Now you might ask me why I picked this one. It's because it is a question on the test. Everything that I'm giving you here, all these examples, are questions on the test. So here we're going to take the log and we're going to multiply it by 10. So you see we're at minus 6. The reason for that is 3 uh, uh, three divided by 12 was 0.25 or a quartering. That's uh, so we, we quartered our, our number. Uh, when you quarter your number, you're actually taking half of a half. So a uh, value of a half, 0.5, is minus 3. Then you're taking half of that, giving you another minus 3. So you put those two minus 3's together and you get a minus 6. Uh, let's uh, go a little bit bigger in, in terms. Let's take uh, 100 as our value for uh, uh, P1 and we're going to divide that by 10 and you'll see that that actually gives us a 10. 10 times 10 is 100 so that you know, dividing we just did that. Now we're going to take the log of this. You'll find the log of 10 is 1. Remember, because we're looking, you know, if we were to raise this, so let's go ahead and do it right now. If I were to use a exponential 1 on 10, 10 to the first power is 10. But getting back to it, we're going to take the log, and then we're going to multiply it by 10, giving us 10. So this is another foot stomp moment. Uh, if you see something is a multiple of 10, 10 times, then you get um, uh, 10 dB out of it. 10 dB is a 10 times multiplier in power. Uh, a 10 times multiplier in power is always 10 dB. Uh, that, that one has no exponentials there. Um, let's take uh, Ooh, what's a good one? How about 200 divided by 20? Oh, look, we got a 10 again. So anytime you get a 10, you will get a 10. Uh, now, uh, that pretty much covers everything. We are going to go through the questions momentarily, but for now, back to the real, the, uh, real life video. Now let's discuss applications in ham radio. If you're shopping for an antenna, you'll find ratings in DBI or DBD. 
DBI is the gain value in dB over an isotropic antenna. Now, the isotropic antenna is a theoretical antenna with perfect radiation in all directions. Think of it as a point in space located at the foci or center of a globe. Power measured at any point on that globe would be exactly the same. Needless to say, there's no such thing as an isotropic antenna. Now, DBD is the gain value of dB over a half-wave dipole. Now, this obviously is a better reference as dipoles actually exist, and they're the basis for most antennas. DBD gain will always be minus 2.15 dB from the DBI value. So the number using DBI will appear to be a better dipole antenna, right? So given that, can you guess which values are advertised by antenna manufacturers? At least mostly. I think there are a few who are honest out there. Now, external amplifiers are rated by maximum output power, but you can use that figure to, uh, you can use that to figure out the dB gain of the amplifier. For example, if you consider the purchase of a 600 watt rated amplifier. Now they tell you that the amp requires an 80 watt input to get to that 600 watt output. Now, using the dB formula we discussed before, you'll find that there is a roughly 8.7 dB gain. You can then do the same comparison with other manufacturers and output ratings to determine the efficiency versus the cost of the different amplifiers. Radio specification lists a wide variety of dB measurements. Most deal with sensitivity to incoming signals, suppression of unwanted frequencies, signals to noise ratios, filtering, and well, there's just a whole bunch more. So I'll leave it to you to look them up but you can see them on the manufacturer's website or on uh, probably in your owner's manual. When purchasing a radio, this is a helpful metric to use to determine how good the radio actually is. That said, keep in mind that the manufacturer's main purpose is to sell radios and will always present things in the best light for them. Now, on your radio, you'll have the ability to attenuate or amplify your received signal. The owner's manual should tell you in dB the value of this attenuation or amplification. Now, the following questions are from the technician exam. For the first question, an, inquest, uh, an increase in five to 10 watts is a doubling. As I mentioned before, a doubling is always three dB. A decrease from 12 to 3 watts is a quartering, or one half. Minus 3D of one half minus 3DB. Combine the two minus 3DBs gives us minus 6DB. A power increase from 20 to 200 is a multiple of 10. And as mentioned before, a multiple of 10 is always 10DB. It goes the other way around, where 10 dB is always a multiple of 10. This comes up in another question that we'll look at later. Uh, this one's pretty easy. SWR has nothing to do with dB, so those answers can be tossed. And by the way, a 4 to 1 SWR is an impedance mismatch. Now, the following questions are from the general exam. In this one, we're given the dB and have to reverse the equation. But since 20 dB is 10 plus 10 dB, you can multiply them to give you 10 times 10 or 100 times more power. You can also mathematically reverse them. Uh, divide 20 by 10, which gives you 2. And 10 to the second power is 100. Uh, this one should be a no-brainer by now. A doubling increase would be 3 dB and a decrease would be minus 3 dB. I, now, this was mentioned briefly before, but it will be on the test. DBI uses an 
Isotopic radio as a reference, well DVD references a dipole antenna. Most manufacturers use DBI as a reference because it is 2.15 dB better than a dipole. In this question, or in the next question, two stacked antennas provide twice the gain of a single antenna. So the answer for a doubling again is always 3 dB. Well, that's it for this time. And uh, if you know more about decibels or just enjoyed our time together, please give me a like. Uh, if you made it all the way through the video, please consider subscribing to this channel. I'm trying to organically grow this channel and that means getting people who are actually interested subscribing. And I can't think of a better type of subscriber than someone who's lasted all the way through this video. If you'd like to be notified when a new video is published, ring that bell. Now, thanks for dropping by my shack for a chat. 7-3 for now. Elmer Tom, ND3N. I'm out.